Welcome to Layer of the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. And on today's episode, I have a special guest, Martin Popoff. We all know and love Martin for the over 100 books on hard rock and heavy metal that he's written, along with the infinite number of reviews and articles as a journalist. We tune into his YouTube channel, The Contrarians, and listen to his enlightening podcast, History in Five Songs. But today, we are here to talk with Martin Popoff, the artist. Martin will be showing us some of his work and discussing with us where and how his passion for art was born. So Martin, thank you for joining me again here at The Lair to discuss your uh, the artistic side, your artist side. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thanks for your interest. This is pretty cool. I'll okay, so uh, I'm going to be leaving links in the description down below where you can get more information on Martin and where you can get more information on Martin's artwork and, and the, the able to have Martin has artwork that is for sale. So uh, we're gonna, you can check out the description down below for links for more information on that. All right, Martin, so let's go back. Uh, where and uh, how did your interest in art begin? And when did you realize you had a gift for it? Well, I've, I've always been interested in it. You know, I, I almost thought that had I not gone into you know, the music stream instead of uh, instead of the art stream, I might have ended up in the art world. I mean, I didn't really end up in the music stream. I ended up going to, you know, I did an undergrad and an MBA and we had a business and then I ended up doing this stuff, writing all these books. So I mean, I'm essentially a, a scribbler, a fanboy who just talks about other people's accomplishments. But I've always thought, um, you know, I've always had it in my mind uh, that, you know, art creating, you know, true fiction rather than nonfiction uh, is is the highest form of of something you can do for a job. And, and you know this. I mean, you, you you've accomplished way more than I have uh, so far uh, in terms of creativity, because, I mean, you've got Sinister Realm and, and these band pro these things you've done where, you know, you've done kind of everything. Right. So you you know the the value of fiction, right? Making actual true pure artwork rather than nonfiction, writing about other people or drawing about other people, which is kind of what I'm doing now. But so, so essentially, um, you know, in the nineties, I started doing, I started doing actual proper art. I, I, um, I, I, um, had a close buddy who's a famous artist and I, I went through kind of a materials training with him which is really cool so I was using like acrylics and oils and it was semi-figurative and semi-abstract and I was buying my own frames and and like ordering sizes and stretching my own canvases and and uh you know along with whatever I was doing in the 90s so this would have been more like mid 90s to, to 2000 I'd say um I was doing art I was selling the stuff I was in three different galleries at one point around Toronto and I was in a small group show and and all this kind of stuff I basically at this point have more or less sold anything that I had done from that period and people keep asking me about it you can see those paintings under the paintings tab at martinpopoff.com um, but so I started doing all that and it just sort of kind of went by the wayside um, you know I guess I got too busy in books and brave words and bloody knuckles and all that stuff and um, I just started picking it up more or less again. And, uh, and the first things I started doing was uh, the, I started just, just drawing reproductions. I love, I love the record ads, right? So I've got all these old rec I've got a collection of 4,000 record ads from the seventies, right. And, and lots from the eighties and, and, you know, from the old melody maker and all. So, so they're all like from those English uh, music papers and they're all black and white so I started doing just these pencil renditions of those ads and then at one point I thought well okay I've got this fog hat night fit a uh, night shift ad um I'm, I love all the text and all that but what if I took a, a buddy of mine's photo Rich Galbraith uh, I took a photo of Craig uh Craig McGregor stuck that in the ad instead so I've, I've kind of made my own hybrid ad thing here right and then I then I discovered um you know I, I wanted to sort of get into color um so well okay so so to keep things in order um yeah so I, I started doing these ads so so I've I framed up and did some small stuff like this so so here's the idea of taking a bunch of text from an old Sabbath ad and I found an old uh, Civil War era photo and combine the two and this is just 
black ink on on paper and then i shrunk this down this is actually the originals you know about a about a foot by 18 inches and put it in this small thing so so you know to go back about the painting thing the paintings were all huge and and you know bulky and large and anytime any of the ones that i have left like people have said hey can i buy that from you it's like what size car do you have and you're going to have to come to Toronto and get it because I'm not going to get into the the wooden box framing thing and all that and and ship these things all over North America or whatever right so so uh you know now that I have the office in the house uh, you know the office is a condo that that I bought years ago in Toronto and but it's full of stuff so so I can't really use it as a studio I started going kind of small eh? and and you know in talking to people I've realized that um like in Toronto, for example, the average house price in Toronto right now is 1.1 million. Um, the average home price, including condos, so condos and houses, is 800,000. Right. Wow. So a lot of people don't have a lot of room, and um, and that I kept hearing that all the time. So so again, here's another one where I went super small. Uh, I just took an old Black Sabbath 45 and redrew it in pencil. And, uh, and, you know, shrunk it to a certain size. Well, I think I got one more like this. Yeah, so here's, here's the same sort of thing. So this is on the subject of really small, right? Um, so this is just a framed up in a little box thing, just a straight drawing. So, so yeah, to carry on, I guess what happened was, um, like I always go to galleries and museums and stuff. And there, I, I went to this huge art gallery north of, north of Toronto here. Uh, McMichael Gallery, and um, there was uh, an Indigenous Northern artist, a whole room or two of his stuff. And I've I've always seen these pencil crayon drawings on on white that I never really liked uh, that that you get, you know, from from this Indigenous, you know, Northern Canada kind of thing. And he had there was a whole wing all, almost where he suddenly was drawing on black. And I thought that looks really cool, right? So I, I started, I, I've been in this big medium search for a long time. Like I say, um, the stuff that I learned from this famous art, artist, a, a buddy of mine, Drew Harris, who now lives in, I think it's Malaysia. Um, uh, so there was a lot of acrylic mixed with oils, mixed with this very expensive stuff called liquid. It's kind of like a pink globular thing. And I was using it as a thinner and a glaze and all this. So I've always been into the different mediums and stuff. So I've been trying acrylic and gouache and uh, uh, oils. I've got, I've got ink, I've got charcoal. But so once I discovered this and tried a few things in it, what I ended up doing was, let me put that there and that there. I started doing the, uh, the, the ad thing but but more like okay so now i'm now i'm kind of creating my own custom ads you know it's a weird thing uh, people either love this idea or they kind of don't talk about it you can tell they think it's the stupidest thing in the world right um so 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 you know you, you're definitely getting a strong reaction i think people either think it's ridiculous and i'm like ruining my reputation doing this kind of stuff or they love it right a lot of people love it but i love it that's the main thing right so so I started doing like, there's a Led Zeppelin presence done that way. It's just all custom. Like it's all just made up. Right. Um, and then, you know, so let's see, what do we got here? And so here's more of a straightforward one where I'm just kind of working with color. I just took a, a standard Alice Cooper ad and, and put some crazy colors into it. But, um, you know, then, then really weird stuff like this. My one of my big themes is I love old timey photos. So I'm I'm using like old photography a lot in a lot of these things, right? So there there's an old like uh, flapper girl from the 20s made made into a mirrors ad, right? Um, and again here I'm just playing with color in this one. Um, you know th this probably never was a color ad, but I'm just using the colors from it. So that's pretty straightforward, right? No big deal. Um, that that's the old days, like when I was just kind of making them in in pencil on on white, right? Which I've stopped doing. Uh, but I've got tons of those that I never even made prints of. So so yeah. By the way, what what I've done with all of this stuff is I've made eight and a half by eleven prints, and uh, I'm numbering them all um, to out, out of seventy. So so they're all going to be limited of at seventy, and I signed them all right. Um, but uh, well, let's see, let's skip the budgie one. So there's there's a budgie bandolier. 
right? Just playing with the colors. So that one again, um, you know, moves some text around, played with the colors. Uh, there's a Captain Beyond one where I didn't even really do anything different to that one. It's just the Captain Beyond cover, right? Uh, but here, here's, so this is uh, one color on, it's just white on black to make that one. That's all that is. Um, and then this is one of my favorites. It's using a uh, Charles Delshaw flying machine. That's a whole different thing, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but stuck in a Dan Dad. So, so that <coughs> nothing there has anything to do with each other. That's kind of all made up. Uh, and here's another one. So this is just taking some, some old magic posters and combining it with. And, and I, love, I love the scratchiness of the pencil crayon on black. There's another damned one. I guess I did a lot of damned ones. And that's just some, some carving off of an old, uh, you know, a, a Mexican building. Here's, here's a cool one. This is the damned again, but just an old magic poster and made up an ad for a single, right? That's all that is. Um, so, and then, yeah, really playing with colors. There's Genesis, you know, Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, done in colors that have nothing to do with it, right? Um, here's a pretty cool one. Well, so yes, yeah, so we got this one I like. A lot of people like this one. So that's a Led Zeppelin in through the outdoor ad using an old magic poster. I've gotten complaints about that one saying, how dare you make Zeppelin even more satanic? <laughs> it's pretty weird. But, um, and there's a cool Zeppelin physical graffiti one that I made up again, using an old, that that's a picture from, I think it's an old, uh, might be an old medicine bottle from the 1800s or something, but you know, completely made up. It's just got Zeppelin on it. Right. So, so I started doing that and, um, if anybody wants to see all of those, uh, they are at a new site that I've put together, martinpopoff.ca. Um, so you could see all those there. Um, but then uh, then I moved into the idea of, um, I wanted to just try some straight portraits. Uh, I've got all these buddies of mine that I've got all these, you know, uh, pictures collected for, for my books uh, sitting in my computer you know, Rudy Childs and Rich Galbraith, all these guys are all buddies of mine, Greg Olma, Dave McDonald, uh, Tom Wallace. Um, so at, at, at some point, well, actually, here, here's a few more. Here's what the originals look like for the, and this one I never made a print of. So again, the idea here is that this is an old um, theater play from 1910s, 1920s Russia, and uh, I just I just stuck a bunch of Black Sabbath technical ecstasy stuff on it and made it into an ad, right? And wow. and kind of used the colors from it. Is then, is that is the is that just a regular black paper? Is that like a thick kind of? It's material? it's fairly thick. It's it's cardstock, right? Oh, okay. Um, and that's what you do the originals on. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's just pencil crayon. And there and there's a there's a technical ecstasy one which uh, I'm actually I, I'm actually out of a lot of them, um, but uh, and here's here's a funny thing so so every time I've tried to do one on not black paper, it's it ta it takes tw two or three times as long. <laughs> I'm I'm two or three times less happy with it usually. Like I've abandoned a lot of them, but when it does turn out, I kind of really do like it. So the, this one's kind of cool. This is a this is an old billboard you know, uh, industry Led Zeppelin to add a whole lot of love helped Zeppelin rise to the top. And then there's some funny text in there and stuff. So again, I just stuck at stuck a, a fake you, a, a 19, a 1920s UFO in, in that one. Right. And then there's a few like this that have nothing on them yet. You know, people say, you know, there's odd ones like this. Actually, I'm holding up that wrong. Yeah, so there's some guys up there. So that's just white on gray. So yeah, so this, so um, yeah, and here's one that's a, uh, this is just kind of a an, an occult, an old occult tarot card uh, from a long story. There's this, this really expensive occult book I got on this tarot thing. So here we go, actually here. So, so I started getting into the straight portraits and uh and decided like okay i'm gonna do a whole bunch of these 
And same kind of thing where they are all, there's no text on them. There's another ad, the damned. Again, um, there's another one of the earlier ones I did, a Billy Gibbons. A funny thing with the portraits is, is um, it's such a challenge because uh, you got to get a likeness of of the guy. So so you know yeah. some of them I, I some of them I many I abandoned. Lately, what I've been doing is when I start this exercise, when I sit down to do this, I I start two or three and I abandon them. I'm get really ticked off, and then I finally hopefully get one to work, and then I can continue on to finish it. But that's that's the challenge. And sometimes the odd time I've gone on and finished it, and I was never quite happy with it or quite liking it all the way through. And those ones I still stand back and look at and go, did I really get what that guy looks like, right? Um, which Yeah, and you made a couple for me. I know you, you, did, uh, you did some bass players, and yeah. I reached out to you. I think you had, I saw this one. Yeah, which that is one turned geezer. out, I think. I think it looks yeah. like geezer. Right. Yeah. And I asked you, hey, can you do a Steve Harris? Yeah. And you did more than one. Yeah. You did two or three. And this was the one that that I picked out. So yeah. for everybody out there, Mark Martin's showing you his original on the bigger black paper. And then you make a eight by ten, I guess this is reproduction. Eight and a half by eleven. Yeah. Eight and a half by eleven of it like this and you were nice enough to even throw in a third bass player yeah chris squire chris i've squire. done chris squire i've done steve howe recently as well yeah and you've done uh well you've done a ton of people and you've done entire bands i know you've done all the guys you know the original black sabbath and, and everything so yeah, that's the other thing that happens. So, so I, I've asked, you know, thriving sort of Facebook sites and, and that, right? It's the only thing I do properly is Facebook. But so, so I ask, hey, who, who do you want? And, and people throw me names and it's like, yeah, I'm glad to oblige. I'll do them. It's not even for you. I'm just going to do three or four of them. And if I ever hear from you again and you want one of these prints, you know, we'll, we'll do it. So I, I recently with the last batch that I've done, so I had 23 original prints. And just last week I, I got in, I did 27 more uh, originals that I got turned into prints. So now I've got exactly 50 prints and I've decided to sort of just standardize the, the pricing on them. So it's like one for 25 to the US shipping included, two for 40, three for 50. Awesome. And like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm stopping them all at 70. When they get to 70, that's, that's all there will ever be. And I'm signing them and all, all that sort of stuff. And the other thing I did again on this idea of keeping things small is I went in. So, so this is something where I've now made little card sets of them. Oh, wow. Right. So, so let me just show these quickly. So. And I'm going to keep doing this too, but I haven't done the latest 27 because there's been a paper shortage and, and they've run out, but um, to get the exact same stock, but so there, there's your Tony Iommi nice. and the backs, everyone now is individually numbered with a little description and a, you know, a credit to the uh, photographer uh, and the title. So everyone's like that now. And then there's a, who we got next? There's a, Eric Bloom. So they're all like that. So I'm going to keep doing that as well. And those have been popular. People want those little card sets. I was doing those for like the, you know, all, all the cards for like 25 bucks or whatever. Here, here's some more, here's some more originals. So again, the idea of, you know, I got into this thing with the, with the, the fighter plane. So that's just a, a weird network. You know, the planes were never part of the net net worth ad. Um, but Again, doing it not on black, it's just a struggle getting getting the color down on the paper. <laughs> um, there, there's what the Alice Cooper original looked like. So there you go. So the originals, what I've done, again, on the whole size thing is because... I do want to get back into full, full on painting and everything, but it's a, it's a big mess and you got to get a lot of stuff out and put a lot of stuff away to get it done. But this stuff is so easy. And what I've done, everything I've been doing, the portraits and the ads, I've been doing the exact, exact maximum size originals that I can put on my scanner and scan and, and, you know, instantly have 600 DPI, 300 DPI, right. a small file. Uh, to use and throw up on Facebook and stuff. There's there's another one that's not had any 
Um, so this is the other thing I've been doing. I, you know, like I say, I like taking the old timey photos. So they're always black and white. Um, so I'm I'm essentially colorizing, right? But the the funny thing with all this is that oh, there's, there's the budgie one. That's a kind of a cool one. So it's new colors and stuff. But but the thing about it, like this isn't really art, right? This is fan art, and it's and it's illustration even. So it's not even painting. So so. I, I've I've gotten in this weird state of mind that I, I keep going to commercial galleries all the time and museums, right? And I come out of galleries like just ticked off that everybody's trying so hard to to like have their little shtick and uh, and have their theme and and this is the way you know this is their trademark. They seem to be trying so hard to be doing things commercial, right? And and I just thought all along the way I'm just going to remove myself from the whole thing and make it just about the rock star and have nothing in terms of like my artistic statement or anything like that in this stuff. So it's almost like going the entire, you know, the hell the other way um, from, from even saying I'm doing art. I mean, it literally is fan art. And when you see, but, but again, that thing with the likeness, say eh? when you see fan art and, and they haven't got the likeness, I, I like really think that person's an idiot, right? <laughs> and, and I know people are saying that about me constantly. I, I, I haven't seen anybody say it, but, but I know when they don't talk about a, a picture that I put up on Facebook or whatever, that I didn't get the likeness, right? And you can tell that they're probably like thinking, oh, this guy's an idiot, right? Because part of, part of the idea of not getting a likeness and then showing it to someone is like, do you really think he looks like that? Right. So, so that's kind of a, a weird thing about it. Too. But I would say, I would say that it's, oh, that's, 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 that's a nice one. Yeah. I would say that when you're doing, okay, first I, I should have done this at the beginning. I have to apologize. I have no background or knowledge of art. So the terminology that I use. No, you're I mean, an artist though. You you I, are absolutely a talented artist in a lot of different ways. So that's- Yeah, but, but the struggling to, to define uh, art for me, it's, it's interesting. My experience with art, I'm very uh, innocent and naive with it. And I love going to, to galleries. And I tell people this all the time. It's one of the few artistic things that I can, go to and I have no background in it. So when I go to an art gallery, when I see art, I'm purely reacting. It's just pure reaction. It's pure emotional. And I can't explain it. I can explain music to you. I've been in theater. I can explain theater to you. I can explain acting to a certain degree to you. But when it comes to art, I just go, I see it. I react to it and I don't analyze it any fur further. And I enjoy the fact that it's so pure for me that it's just purely reactionary. And sometimes I envy people like with music who have no knowledge of music and they're just strictly, well, I like it because I like it and they can't go any farther with it. And so, so for me, uh, you know, I went to an art gallery once with a friend who, who was like a trained artist. And as soon as we walked in, I, I, I said, oh, you know, I, I made a comment about something. And he said, oh, well, you know, that's this and the lines. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> don't, don't start telling me the technical reasons why this is good or bad. Let's just walk around and say, yeah, I like that. I, because I don't want it to be spoiled yeah. for me. So because of that, I lack some of the... Uh, I lack some of the, you know, language, I guess, that you would use to describe to describe some of these things. But I was going to say about the portraits, uh, I would think that that is especially difficult because if, if you're painting something that you created in your head, there's nothing to reference it against. Let's say you you create a creature or something. Yeah. There's nothing to reference it against. It's your creation. But if you're drawing a picture of Billy Gibbons or Tony Hayomi, everybody knows what they look like and, and everything. So you, you have to, I would think that that would be way more difficult. And as an artist, I wouldn't say maybe nerve wracking because you know, yeah. like, you know, you're going to put this picture and you're going to put it out there. And well, everybody knows what Tony Iommi looks like and what, you know, Robert Plant looks like and things. So immediately people are seeing this and they're thinking in their head, like, 
you know, they're thinking of, you know, a picture of Tony Iommi or whatever. So for, I would think, I would think that that's more difficult doing like self portraits like that rather than just your own creation. Yeah. So or am I wrong? You know what else happens, John? This is really wild. So, so I have, hundreds and hundreds of photos to choose from right to, to decide what to draw and i've learned through the process of doing these portraits there are a lot of photos out there of the guy that doesn't look <laughs> like the guy so if you start with a photo where, where you get a weird angle or he's got an yeah. expression on his face that you don't normally see from him and all that kind of stuff you could start with a photo that actually doesn't look like the guy and then and then you and then you screw it up by another 10 percent, and then all of a sudden it doesn't look like Right. But I've also learned teeth are hard. Bald heads are hard. Um, <laughs> I start with the eyes like I basically basically, like I say, the other thing I've learned is the smaller, the, the smaller the head on the thing, um, the harder it is to do. So, I mean, once once I break out of this, oh, I want to scan it. Now I got to get into photographing the things properly to get an image. Once I start doing them really big, it's going to be even easier. Uh, to do right yeah, um, because yeah. that that's the point i mean it's and i i actually started uh, um experimenting with a little bit of acrylic too i i learned that it's hard to do you know lettering you know that this is pretty cool and easy to do uh and and like i say i like the effect of pencil crayon on black i just love the effect right um but i've learned that it's hard to do uh, lettering really with a paintbrush. So, so like if I'm going to do the fake ads, probably not going to do that in acrylic here. I'll just show you a few more here that I've got. So there's my Richie Blackmore. I thought this one turned this out really is. nice. I mean, this, so when you say, when you say pencil and crayon, pencil, crayon, pencil, oh, that's, a specific, that's a specific type of Oh, it's like a crayon, but it's, but it's like a pencil. Or? Well, you know, pencil crayons, eh? I'll, I'll here's, here's a set. It's pencil crayons. Oh, okay. Got it. Right. Yeah. Okay. You know, which. Yeah, uh, I just never knew what, here's my ignorance coming through. I just never knew what exactly you called them. <laughs> well, sometimes they call them colored pencils. Okay. That's, that's all right. Colored <laughs> pencils. Right. All right. Because when I think of crayons, I have I have yeah. kids, so I think of the you know a Crayola yeah. you know, box of crystal. So I thought you were doing regular pencil, and okay, Got and it's it. funny, it, even like right on the back of the cards, you know, my my description because you can also go to artpal.com and see every single one of the portraits. So all fifty portraits are there. That they aren't all at martinpopoff.ca. I haven't kept it up. So at artpal, but there's the description of them, which I'm using on the cards, right? So there's there's your dusty. So the description, so so when I started doing the description, I would say pencil crayons, right? But then I realized colored pencil is 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 the classier term for it, right? <laughs> but it's just not a classy medium. Like drawing period isn't a classy medium. It's, it's not in vogue, it's not. So I'm breaking every rule of trying to act like I'm actually doing art. So it's not really art, it, it's the way I look at uh, it. It looks like art to me. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is again, just straight uh, pencil. This okay. is pencil on white. So these are the early ones I did where it's just a standard ad. There's, there's, you know, more of a creative ad. So that's a Rich Galbraith photo that I drew from. And then I made this mirrors ad. In fact, I combined two different mirrors ads and then changed the colors. And then and here's that Sabbath one again. So, so again, this is just this, this particular Sabbath ad had no picture of anything in it. And it was just a tiny little ad. But I blew it up and moved it around and moved the pieces. So there's your text. And then I just combined it with a civil warship. That's okay. all that is. All right. The, the the card set you have, do you you sell them as like uh, groups or do people buy yeah. them individually? Yeah, what I did is I had the first 23 as a group, and then the next 27 will be as a group. So now I'm at 50. And from here on out, I guess I'm gonna do 25 at a time, right? Um but uh, like I say, I haven't done the next 27. I've, I've got some people waiting for them. But because there's been with with this whole COVID thing and supply chain stuff, there's there's been paper shortages of various things. And I can't get the exact same thick stock. So those aren't done yet. But the 27 new portraits in print form are all in. And they're all on the same stock as, as before. There's the Hawkwind one I did. Again, this was super hard to do because it was impossible getting the pencil colored pencil to uh to stick to this paper where is it there's a michael shanker nice 
So when you're doing these ads and you're, you're, you're putting your own spin on them, what comes first for you? You see the ad and you think of adding something to that ad, or do you see something and think an image somewhere else and think, wow, that's a cool image. I could put that in that black Sabbath ad, or is it just comes to you any? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Sometimes I see an image that says, man, that speaks blue oyster cult to me in a huge <laughs> way. Right. Or like, like right now I've got some lined up, some, some pictures, some really obscure pictures from the building of, of a, of an, of an old building in Mexico um, and, and like some draftsmanship and all this stuff where, where it reminds me of like the, um, you know, the Gallic city you know city of the future idea from the first couple of blue oyster cult albums where i think okay if i if i just do that in white on black and add a little bit of red and then add some blue oyster cult tyranny of uh, ty tyranny and mutation you know add text there's there's a really cool old tyranny and mutation ad. i'll add that to this old picture of this building getting and 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 the, the what's in the picture is all swirly and and concentric and all that and it'll remind of the of the um you know the blue oyster cult uh which one is it is it blue oyster cult or tyranny uh, both actually uh album covers really um so that's kind of happens too here's just a couple more there's my dave king from fast way yeah, so, again these are from rudy child's pictures so uh i think i just got one more. oh yeah there's just one more here two more we got a we got a kk original that's also from a rich gal galbraith photo and then there's that eric so with this Eric, for example, that 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 Eric guitar is actually black, but it looked right. terrible in the thing. So I just changed it to red. And so that's that one turned out good. That was good. So so, yeah, so so I, I I'm going to do this and I want to keep doing this. And, and again, it's it's like I love the idea of, you know, it's a little bit like the books where it, I like books over magazines because I like the permanence of it. You get a book finished, it's finished. You got this thing. You don't have to think about it anymore. Now you just make a bunch of them and you can sell them for years going forward. And, and I love the idea of this being almost like a factory, like Andy Warhol's factory yeah. of like, do the picture, scan it, put it on Facebook, put it on art pal, make the prints and just have them. They don't take up a lot of room, right? For me to, to have them here to fill orders. And they're just out there and I'll occasionally tell people about them or I'll tell them when the new ones come out and uh, and just send them out. So it's it's just kind of fun having all this. And I, I can see wanting, you know, I want to go into record shows with them and stuff like that. And maybe at some point, yeah, like collector or whatever. But I, I just I really I don't know if I'm ever going to go back to doing um, I, I probably will do proper art soon again, because right now I'm, I'm just I'm very restless and trying to try out all these different mediums again and go back to the canvases and get all that out and make the big messes again. But that whole gallery system thing, I, I just, I like this, this weird little self, uh, you know, like, like workshop factory idea. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a D DIY, you know, yeah. you're doing it yourself here rather than I'd imagine the art world is, is sort of like, the music world in some respects, you know, you're trying to get into a gallery, a big gallery is like scoring a record deal with a big label or something. Yeah. There's probably a ton of politics involved, you know, who gets picked and, you know, trying to get who, you know, and stuff like that to get, to get into these things. Yeah. When you were in the galleries, you say, you say painting. So those, those were uh, the style. What was the style of art that you were doing when the stuff that was in the galleries, how would you describe that? Yeah, so I would say that it was quite derived from my training with Drew Harris. Um, you could look him up online. It's amazing, amazing art he's done over the decades. Um, but yeah, big, big famous artist. Um, but so it was a lot of acrylic mixed with oils, mixed with drips and scrapings and layers and it was all on canvas you know primed gessoed canvas that i stretched myself they were large um you know those were those were like when, when i was selling them like the big ones would be like 1200 bucks a thousand bucks i i remember some for 800 some smaller ones for 750 some about this size were going for 450 um and um you know they were my favorite my favorite ones had kind of like a, like a black planet or a black moon in them and, uh, and just really cool colors. Um, 
Yeah. I've, hard to describe, but I think every single one of them or, or most of them are actually, there's pictures of them on, um, on, uh, on martinpopoff.com under. Yeah. Pictures. Yeah. yeah I've seen and it. yeah. And, um, and some of those pictures that are there are actually low res. And I, I don't have the, I don't have the paintings anymore. They're all gone and distributed out there. And I don't even know who has them all. Um, some of them I'd like to buy back actually, <laughs> if I could. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I could see going back to that, but I'm thinking almost going back to that and being even more figurative. And, you know, I may, I may still fall on this crutch of, uh, of doing rock stars using those mediums. And that would be, that would be amazing. Maybe um, a combination again, of, of the two, you know, that. Yeah. I can sort of picture it in my head, the, the artist sort of inside with that, your, your earlier style, I don't know how to describe the earlier yeah. style with you, so with like the brush strokes and, and stuff like that uh, on it, some sort of combination of the two would be interesting. But the problem there is then, okay, so I, I can do the painting, I could photograph the painting and sell prints, but then I'm stuck with this big, huge, bulky <laughs> original that I'm not going to ship anywhere. If, I, if anybody's yeah. going to buy it, they have to actually come to my office and take it from me, right? Um, so so it, it quickly, you know, they take up a lot of room, right? I mean, literally my first question when I get, people ask all the time, oh, can I buy some of these paintings of yours that I see at your site? The old site, like, like what you were just looking at, the old paintings. My first question to them is, what is the make and model of your car? Because <laughs> we have to decide whether it's going to fit in your vehicle because it oh. most of them don't fit in my vehicles, right? They, they would look cool. You know where they would look cool if, if some of them were like hanging in a club that has rock yeah. shows and stuff like that. That'd be a good... All well, right. you know, even the portraits. I mean, I would love to... Yeah, yeah love the to portraits like go on too, to like a band. public bar somewhere or something. Yeah. That would be... Like, you know, be... I, I dream of some... Here I'm wearing a clutch shirt, right? So it's like... What, what if I am, because I've often thought, Clutch is one of my favorite bands, right? And, and I've often thought, I would love to do a series of like 120 uh, illustrations or paintings based on Clutch lyrics, or draw pictures of Clutch, or make fake Clutch ads, or whatever. And wouldn't it be wild to like be, be like, be on tour with clutch and have a room off to the side where you've got a clutch gallery full of all your stuff and you're selling it or whatever. But, yes. but, you know, less complicated than that would be just simply going in record shows with these things. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I like that idea though, what you said of like, yeah. maybe if you took an album, you took black Sabbath's heaven and hell and you did a, a picture for each song yeah. on the album. And then you sell those as a, you could do the album cover too. You could do the guys in it, but then a, a picture like an interpretation for each song because you're talking about uh you have done some of your some of your art has been in some of your books like we did a video a uh, little little while ago on your blue oyster cult imagine yes. those reimagined I've done those too yeah yeah and those were things sort of what we're talking about you were taking these ideas and coming up with these these images yeah people haven't really picked up uh, but this guy right here, that's the one known photo of Gallic. Wow. Gallic is the is the designer who did the Blue Oyster Cult, those two first two album covers, right? Wow. So and then I've got him in a Templars thing. But yeah, so so this is this is all of those uh, ports. So I did 39 portraits from this book that are available as prints. And they're all, uh, you know, the idea here was old timey photos. It's all a cult. Uh, there's Austin Osmond spare young and old with his cat. Um, you know, there's, there's some cupids, uh, frying up some hearts over a fire while a guy goes down into the subway. That's from the back cover of that's an alchemical thing, but it's from the back cover of the live album. There's the, the Duke who got killed to start world war one. There's a Rosicrucian little, uh, statue looked at by some people in Toronto from there's a there's a there's a Gallic airship UFO with some Civil War soldiers so and there's uh, that's the guy who did the real uh, uh, long story there uh, book but yeah so all of that all of those are in this Imaginos expanded book so that's the only time I've ever put anything in a book um, have you ever thought about combining a whole bunch of your work and having a Martin Popoff art book? I, yeah, I don't think it would really sell. Um, 
you know, maybe eventually once I have hundreds of them and I can, I can theme them in a certain cool way, but, but like I just said about clutch, I mean, I, I would see another one of my favorite bands is Voivod and I love what Michelle has done with the artwork and stuff across Voivod. And, and I would, I would love to do, I would love to. Right. Like that would be so cool. Um, you know, to add to Michelle's canon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Started. Absolutely. But, uh, but you know, again, the, the whole thing is, um, and I, I've run into this with people who have written, rock guys who've written their memoirs, and then they've moved and written fictional stories about rock and roll. And specifically, I'm speaking of uh, Jizzy Pearl, kind of a buddy of mine from Love Hate, right? And so he has grappled with this idea of, of, um, he wants to be seen as a real author. He's a great writer and he's done a few books, right? So he he wants to be seen as a as a, as an actual writer. And he told me once, and I thought this was very insightful. He said, for any of us to to become true artists, we have to make a break with the rock and roll. We have to leave the rock and roll completely, right? And so that that imaginos thing I did was a little bit in that way, because all the images kind of break away. You know, they're based a little bit on the lyrics and, and it goes way beyond. But to go back to actual, to, to, to actually become a true artist and be, be doing real art um, that, that, that doesn't have that fan link or you're biting on the fame of these guys or whatever, right? Uh, or, or like if I, I was inspired by Voivod's lyrics or anything like that. It's like, it's like Jizzy said, you, you, gotta, you, gotta, uh, you gotta make that complete break with rock and roll. If that's the field you came from or whatever, you got to get right away from it. And like, like, you know, he wants to write stories that have nothing to do. And he's, he started to do this and they're really cool. Start started to do stories that, that weren't fictionalized stories of a rock star anymore, but just kind of like cool fictionalized stories. Right. And, and it, and it's boom, he's done real fiction. Right. So it's almost like if, 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 uh, if, you know, Sinister Realm did a, did a, a covers album of Sabbath <laughs> or original material. Right. Yeah, and it sort of goes back to what we were saying about the portraits. When you do a cover song, everybody knows the original, so they're using that as the reference. Yeah, it's sort of like that with the uh, with the portraits. But and all uh, you've done is been a fanboy, right? I mean, you're just you're just a fan who is who is in, instead of just uh, you know walking up to the guy and wanting to get a picture with him, you drew a picture of him <laughs> or you covered their song, right? Uh, so so the point is is, is you know that that difference between Fan fiction slash nonfiction yeah, yeah, yeah. documentary over to fiction. Yeah, yeah. Right? So when when you're doing uh, like a picture like this, how how long does it take you basically from start to finish? And do you have like multiple things going on at one time where you're jumping from one to another, or do you just all right? It's Chris Chris Squire. I'm doing this until it's uh, you just focus on one, or do you have multiple things going on? Yeah, that's interesting because the old method, like when it was really involved, like the real paintings from the 90s, uh, I would have to have multiple things going on because <clears throat> you had you had oil drying, you had turpentine drying, you had liquid drying, you had water drips drying. So I would have two or three paintings going at once and, and you couldn't go back to certain things. I would I would lay down like a like a layer of black acrylic on top of oil which you're not supposed to do like they're not supposed to mix and drew drew harris has had actually had conservationists look at his methods and say will this last hundreds of years and he's had it all assessed and it will if you do certain things right but so the point is 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 you know i would apply i would apply some like acrylic on top of oil and you'd have to wait for a long long time if you're going to scrape that away just a certain certain amount to get the right scrape effect that, that you wanted off of something like that right um but when it comes to this really simple stuff because again you know do, doing this is just it's it's falling into a convenience crutch right so no i would never have more than one going at once there's no point it's just it's just colored pencil you just finish it you start it you finish it sort of thing so a couple hours yeah they, they, yeah couple hours three hours um but yeah it's it's been uh, I, i've been in this nagging situation lately where i i start with a face from one photo and i can't get the damn thing and i erase <laughs> it and move on to a whole different photo and try that one and try that one and then if one finally clicks and i go yeah it clicked okay i can finish this one right so well, that's that, what I was going to say. Is it, is it, is it, uh, 
is it hard to say this is done? Do you ever reach like, oh, okay, this is, or are you always kind of like, man, I, I could do a little, you know, how, how do you reach that point where you say, okay, is it easy for you to say this is done or is it sort of like nagging you like, oh, maybe I should touch up this. Maybe I should touch up that. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've done, I got, I, I finish it. I get all excited. I scan it. I scan it again, <laughs> scan it again. I stick it up on Facebook and then I look at it like 20 minutes later and go, oh man, that's not right at all. You know, <laughs> and I have to erase a bunch of stuff and change it. That's the other thing with pencil crayon. You can just erase it. Right. So with all every medium in, in art, you know, it has its other, it's different challenges, right? There's certain things you can't erase you know if i did this in ink for example yeah that's it, you know um so so i would change it and then i got to scan it the three ways all over again and blah 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 so yeah. uh your art pal website i don't know if i have that that name right yeah. uh can you have the pictures i thought i remember are they also available to be put on other things too or are they just sold and in you know this yeah size. so 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 the, these eight and a half by 11 prints is a totally in-house thing and i'm shipping those up but at art pal the whole idea of a site like that and and all those sites there's dozens of them right and i just picked this one um uh and i like it it's it's easy, easy to use but essentially when you go there you can pick a picture you can ask um you can show what it looks like above a, a couch uh, in a room or whatever. Um, you can show what it looks like super big or small. You can, you can order them from them and they will print it on canvas of various sizes. They will make a print of various sizes. They don't have like a million things like t-shirts and all that stuff, but I think you can get it printed on a mug. Yeah. Um, that's what I remember. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, print any size you want uh, on canvas. Uh, I think on, yeah, on, a, on print on paper as well. And then if you, you know, when you upload a picture, if you haven't given them good enough resolution, it'll limit the size that they'll, uh, mm. they'll put it on. But I, I'm scanning everything pretty, pretty high res to go there. So, yeah, so that's there um, for, for flexibility and whatnot. But, but I love this whole print thing. And like I say, keeping them eight and a half by 11, I've got these mailers. I can put them in there. It's, it's real easy to do. But anything bigger than that is, is just going to be, you know, because I've sold some of the originals as well. But even those, even just being a little bit bigger like this, I've said, no, I'm not mailing those anywhere, even though they're just paper, right? So yeah. people have had to come here to get them, which they've done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's that's great. So everybody out there, you know, definitely check out these links and you'll get to see all of Martin's different work. And Martin's constantly working on things. If I'll link to, to his Facebook page because you're always posting what you're working on and new things there and people throwing out requests and stuff like that. So, so maybe we'll finish up with what, what is uh, sort of your, what are you seeing in the future uh, for, for your, for your artwork? You sort of mentioned some of the things you might want to do, but uh, you know, what are you thinking three months from now? What are you thinking three years from now? Or are you just taking it day by day? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm still trying out, you know, getting the courage up to bring out all the all the heavy stuff, all the brushes, all the paints, I got so many art supplies, I've got canvases in storage in two different places, I've got art supplies all over the place in storages and boxes. So I, I got to bring out all that stuff, get the oils out again, get the acrylics out, try try ink again, try charcoal again. But I want to keep doing this because I love I love uh, series, right? I love the idea of just, they're all the same size. I can make prints like this. I can make cards. I would love to, I would love to have this card set be like hundreds of them, right? Yeah. Or the prints to have hundreds of them um, rather than right now where it's just at 50 or whatever. And, and I'd like to continue the ads as well. But yeah, I, I just see, I just see slowly moving into larger sizes and, and more proper art rather than just being, you know, because I'm still, I mean, Drawing pictures of rock stars is exactly the same job to me. It's no better than writing books on these guys. It, it, Cause I, I'm still not, I'm still not really an artist. I'm still just like a, a groupie, right? <laughs> so. All right. Uh, okay. I lied. One last question. What is in the world of artists or a particular artist or a particular painting that you find that really, really inspired you? What's the physical graffiti or who's the Led Zeppelin in the in the art world that's like kind of your that maybe sparked the inspiration when you were younger or maybe even, you know, still to this day, you know, a piece of art or an artist that yeah, I really, really, really inspires you. I really love uh, Austin Osmond Spare. People can check him out. Um, he 
died around 1950 something. Um, his his main sort of uh, you know busy period, crazy life he led. Um, he's a he's a real occultist too. He's written actual almost unintelligible, you know, beyond Kenneth Anger makes no sense occult books, right? He he was like one of the first chaos magicians, essentially. He was he's he's beyond uh Aleister Crowley and and he actually uh Crowley wanted to to work with him and, and Austin Osmond Spare did not want to work with him because Austin Osmond Spare was more of a um he had his own path and it was more of a solitude philosophical path and, and Aleister Crowley was more about ceremony. It's more like ceremonial magic, I suppose. And Austin Osmond Spare is considered the, the chaos magician. But anyways, Austin Osmond Spare was also a, um, <clears throat> a, uh, a realist symbolist painter and drawer. So he did a lot of drawing. He actually did a lot of, that's right. He actually did a lot of um, essentially pencil crayon on colored paper as well. Um, but he he's more known for painting. He did these really cool this this uh, series of paintings are really creepy. Um, well, I mean, he has stuff that's quite horrific and almost looks like heavy metal art as well. But mm. he did these series of paintings that he called uh, side reel or side reel. He, it's spelled S I D E R E A L paintings. Um, and this is in his later period. Th this is a guy who was like kind of like a bit of an Enfant Terrible, um, at the very beginning, he kind of peaked in his fame when he was about 16, 17 years old before his twenties. And then he dropped off and he became a recluse and he kind of lived like with a bunch of cats in this kind of a squalid apartment and stuff. Um, and then the other crazy thing that happened is, uh, at one point Hitler wanted to have Austin Osmond Spare do a portrait of him, but but Austin Osmond Spare wrote a nasty letter back and saying under no circumstance, blah, 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 and all this, this sort of stuff. And then later on, he had this huge gallery full of stuff and uh and German bombs destroyed his gallery and 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 uh you know burned burned up most of his stuff. So a lot of Austin Osmond Spare's stuff was lost. Um, you know, people, people basically put that down to coincidence where was i going to this oh yeah the side reel paintings so go check these out online um so what they are are literally um just headshots of normal people because he would like draw like prostitutes and people in the bar he would hang out in the bars and he would sell his stuff in the bars later on um but um they're literally just pictures of these people but he he tilted the um, perspective a little bit, and they and they look like really kind of like mentally unhinged, and they have kind of like this uh, this old out of fashion nineteen fifties feel to them as well. They're really they're, I I think they're the creepiest thing he ever did. Yet on the surface they're not even that creepy, right? I mean he's got creepy stuff with, with that look like visions of hell and things from his early days. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he's uh, probably my favorite. Uh, I've got. A bunch of spare books and stuff as well he's that's my cool. favorite and that's why i uh included him where is that shot again if i could find that quickly so he he's actually included and talked about in the text of the of the imaginos thing um yeah but, yeah but the reason he's in there is partially all that plus all the chaos magician stuff plus remember that this thing is about the um occult origins of world war one right which there really aren't any occult origins of World War One. There are of World War Two, but so that that is Austin Osmond Spare. So that's him in old age with one of his cats, and there he is young, drawing one of his paintings. That's a famous photo of him where he's painting with his eyes closed, right? Um, and there's all this mystical stuff. He, he also has these kind of unsettling pictures that are a continuous line, so they're a little bit like. Um, it's a little bit like that uh, drawing from a dream state at night, kind of kind of weird, creepy idea. Just just like when you see, you know, that occult stuff about uh, how, you know, uh, supposedly, uh, you know, people have uh, woke, you know, not even woken from a dream and grabbed a pen and, and, and written some crazy, crazy words and text or unintelligible in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah. From. So so he's done some of that stuff as well. But ch check out the side reel uh, paintings. Those those are the those are the the weirdest ones <laughs> awesome. yeah
All right. Well, you have anything else you'd like to share with? Uh, no, with that's. Uh, I'm. I'm sorry for yapping your uh, yapping your ears off, but I get excited about this stuff because this is what I want to do. So, <laughs> oh, it's great stuff. Yeah, this was this is really fascinating, fantastic. So, yeah, thank you for coming here to the layer and and sharing with us your your story and your your artwork. It's really exciting, and I know there's going to be uh, plenty more to come. So make sure everybody out there you check out those links. Uh, down below so you can order some of Martin's prints so you can see what he's going to be doing in the future with his artwork and it'll also be a link of course where you can find out more about Martin's uh, books that he has for sale uh, music themed books and everything so all right well uh, Martin thanks again for uh, joining me here at the lair Thank and you, uh, until we see you next time make sure you rock hard ride free